Welcome to 666, the final answer, part 11. I would like to give a special welcome, to all my subscribers, and friends. I would also like to thank, all of you for your patience, and your support. I thank all of the mathematicians, and students, from around the country, for participating in the final answer, part 11 video series. The upcoming videos will be focused on, finding the answer to the riddle of 666. This riddle can be found, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 18. Everything you are about to see, and hear will be related, to this riddle, the number 666, and its answer. Be patient, and you will gain a complete, and overall understanding, of the final answer. The videos you will be watching, will be analytical, as I will be taking a systematic, approach in an effort to discover the riddle's true answer. In order for me to get this video series uploaded before the deadline, it was necessary to obtain and bring together clips from certain documentaries that touch on the subject. I will have to give them recognition for using their material. So please bear with me for less than one minute while I run the logos and themes and also run the fair use notice. Finally, coming up next, part 11. In 1727, just weeks before his death, one of the most famous men of his day is busy burning boxfuls of his manuscripts. What could have been in them that he was so desperate to destroy? The date of Armageddon, the ingredients of the Philosopher's Stone, maybe even the key to eternal life. Isaac Newton, I mean, just look at, you read his writings. The hair stands up on, I don't have hair there, but if I did, it would stand up on the back of my neck. You read his writings, the man was connected to the universe in ways that I've never seen another human being connected. It's kind of spooky, actually. Uh, he discovers the laws of optics figures out that white light is composed of colors. That's kind of freaky right there. If you take your colors of the rainbow, put them back together, you get white light again. That freaked out the artists of the day. <laughs> How does that work? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet gives you white. Uh, the laws of optics, he discovers the laws of motion and the universal law of gravitation. Then a friend of his says, well, why do these orbits of the planets, why are they in the shape of an ellipse? Sort of flattened circle. Why aren't they some other shape? And he said, you know, I can't, I don't know. I'll get back to you. So it goes, goes home, comes back a couple months later. Here, here's why. They're actually conic sections, sections of a cone that you cut. And they said, well, how did you find this out? How did you determine this? Well, I had to invent integral and differential calculus to determine this. Then he turned 26. Then he turned 26. We got people slogging through calculus in college just to learn what it is that Isaac Newton invented on a dare, practically. So that, that's my man, Isaac Newton.
This man was the father of modern science. He unlocked gravity's secrets. But it seems that falling apples were not at the top of his priority list. He is obsessed with secret codes and prophecy in the Bible. And it could cost him his job or even his life. In the last 20 or 30 years, we have a picture of a Newton who is very interested in religious ideas. He decides that he's going to do for theology what he's done for mathematics and physics. He must be spending five or six hours every day doing religious study. He writes more words on the scriptures than he does on science and alchemy combined. Newton's work on biblical studies, he's looking at early religious texts uh, and, and dissecting them. He has a very analytical mind, so he likes to, to scrutinize early church records and the Bible. Newton is particularly obsessed by the book of Revelation and believes that it contains secret information. Newton spent much of his time studying the number 666 and the riddle found in the book of Revelation, chapter 13 verse 18. But this should be of no surprise, because just about every mathematician that has ever researched the book of Revelation, seems to always begin their serious research with the riddle of 666. Mathematicians that study the book of Revelation are attracted to this riddle because it seems to have a mathematical code within it. Many of them have tried to solve it but no one has ever succeeded. Theologians and biblical scholars throughout history have always sought to identify a 666 candidate from their own perspective of history, religious doctrine, and ominous current events. Sir Isaac Newton believed that the number 666 represented something far more significant than just some evil villain. Sir Isaac Newton, having perhaps the greatest scientific mind of all time, accepted the books of Daniel and Revelation as revelations from God. He grows ever more brilliant and ever more solitary. Newton uh, works uh, obsessively. He, he is something of a recluse and he writes reams of material that no one else sees. Uh, this is knowledge that he's developing for himself. Newton became obsessed over the years as he tried to discover a hidden numeric code in the book of Revelation. Newton was certain that this numeric code was hidden within the riddle of 666. He studied verse 18, in chapter 13, in the book of Revelation. This is the verse where the infamous riddle of 666 is located. Newton spent years trying to discover the wisdom that he knew was locked up within the riddle. He was certain this wisdom would only be revealed by interpreting the true meaning of the number 666. Some believe Newton, who never married and seems never to have had a close relationship with anyone, hoped to use his abilities, particularly in mathematics, to find this biblical wisdom. Newton was devoted to the study of biblical scripture, just as he was devoted to mathematics. One could say, that when it came to this riddle, Newton had the best, of both worlds. He devoted a substantial portion, of his time trying, to locate a key that would unlock, the hidden numeric code, that was held within the riddle itself. At the same time, Newton was trying to discover the wisdom held within the riddle he would push himself at times to continue his research into the book of Daniel. Newton used this cryptic book of Daniel to calculate the future date for the apocalypse. The continuous pressure he put himself under looking for answers and looking for the wisdom within the riddle eventually took its toll. All of this some experts believe contributed to Newton's nervous breakdown he had around 1693. He certainly was looking for something and he obviously did not find it because he opted uh, not to publish anything uh, about it. I think there's no question that he was disappointed because he was looking for ultimate answers to questions. Finally, Newton had what many think was a nervous breakdown. He made wild accusations against his few friends, charging one, the philosopher John Locke, with trying to embroil him with women. Locke is puzzled by the whole thing, you know, what is, what's up with 
Isaac there. He wasn't running a brothel on the side and bringing Sir Isaac to it. When Newton explained that he was sick and had gone without sleep for five nights, his friends forgave him. I think there is a lot of independent evidence that Newton did push himself to the limit continuously and that he did indeed engage in this kind of distracted behavior. And he was capable of being utterly tunnel visioned and obsessed with whatever it was he was doing. As Newton came to the understanding that the number 666 represented something very significant. He believed that interpreting the meaning of the number 666 would reveal a hidden Bible code. He devoted a substantial portion of his time trying to locate a certain key that would unlock the hidden, numeric code that was held within the riddle itself. Newton believed that when the riddle was solved, it would reveal much knowledge, and would also unveil deeper truths, and a greater understanding, of the acts and ways of God. Isaac Newton concluded, that it is intended that revelation, will be understood by very few, until near the end of history, the time of judgment, and the beginning of the everlasting kingdom of the saints of the Most High. Sir Isaac Newton never found, the key he needed to solve the mystery, behind the riddle or the number 666. However, Sir Isaac Newton came closer to finding its meaning, than anyone else in history, ironically. Sir Isaac Newton literally had the key at his fingertips all the time. After you see the answer to the riddle, you will understand and realize that the key that Isaac Newton needed to solve the riddle was this symbol for pi. The symbol for pi was introduced by the English mathematician William Jones in 1706, who wrote, pi equals 3.14159. It wasn't until 1737 that Leonhard, Euler one of the most revolutionary, mathematicians, used that symbol. But, it does not end here because, in the late 1990s a box was found in London, and in it were a few papers that belonged to Isaac Newton. Among these papers there was an unopened letter from his friend William Jones. Although William Jones was of little importance as a research mathematician, he is well known to historians of mathematics since he corresponded with many 17th century mathematicians, including Newton. It just so happened that the contents of the unopened letter from William Jones explained to Newton about how he was using this symbol for pi and his work to represent the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter, and he encouraged Newton, to do the same. If Isaac Newton had become familiar with, and used the symbol for pi in his work, then he would eventually discover that, this was the very key that he needed to solve the riddle, and understand the number 666. Imagine if that happened, would the world today be a much different place? is quite simply, one of the most important numbers, ever to touch humanity. After all, at the end of any given search, we will, more often than not, find something we do not expect. And what do we expect? To find less than the meaning of life? This quote, is by Matthew Montgomery. Pi is what's known as an irrational number. Written as a decimal, it has an infinite number of digits arranged in a sequence that never repeats. And it's thought that any number you can possibly imagine will appear in pi somewhere. From my birthday, to the answer to life, the universe and everything. Because they go on forever, we can never know all the digits that make up pi. But luckily, we only need the first 39 to calculate the circumference of a circle the size of the entire observable universe, accurate 
to the radius of a single hydrogen atom.